The National Archives that's harassing President Trump over these records issues are, is unlawfully hiding and stonewalling the release of information about the harassment of President Trump by Barack Obama. We just sued the Obama Library for Obama White House records about the 2016 Russia collusion hoax. Now, uh, who, what, when I say the Obama Library, what do I mean? I mean the National Archives. So the National Archives that's harassing President Trump over these records issues are, is unlawfully hiding and stonewalling the release of information about the harassment of President Trump by Barack Obama. So harassing Trump while protecting Obama. So we filed two requests back in March. Uh, the first request was for records of former, of former Obama White House National Security Advisor Susan Rice, who now is in the Biden White House as, I think, domestic, she's chief of the Domestic Policy Council. She's the top domestic person. Uh, regarding alleged efforts by the Russian government to interfere with the 2016 presidential election and con collude with the Trump campaign and um, the alleged hacking of Democratic National Committee and or Clinton campaign uh, computer systems. So, uh, Russiagate, right? And we know no American knowingly colluded with the Russians. Of course, they knew that too. So we want records about what the White House knew and when about that. And then there was this infamous meeting that took place on January 5th, 2017, literally a few weeks before President Trump was coming into office. And it took place in the Oval Office, and it was a meeting between President Obama, Vice President Biden, who, as you may know, is now President of the United States, Rice, uh, the corrupt FBI Director Comey, the corrupt CIA Director John Brennan, and the corrupt Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. Now, uh, that's an interesting meeting because that's where they, you know, they were all talking about the conspiracy against Trump uh, that they knew at the time, and it was being reported to them, uh, really wasn't panning out in terms of having anything to back it up. So, surprise, surprise. Uh, but they didn't care. And uh, the next day, uh, and, and this discussion took place at this Oval Office meeting, uh, Comey went and harassed Trump and tried to confront him and see how he would react. He was president-elect of the United States with the fake dossier. It was, it was a conspiracy hatched, it looks like, based on the information that I've seen in the Oval Office. So what's really peculiar is that Susan Rice wrote an email on January 20th, a few weeks after this meeting, pretending to memorialize it in a very convenient way, which I'll get into. And the, and the email was written on January 20th, as I said, which just happened to be the day that uh, President Trump was sworn in. I, th I think it was like a few minutes before he was sworn in, the memo was written. So this was like a last ditch effort to paper the record. And this is what Susan Rice wrote. On January 5th, following a briefing by IC leadership intelligence community, uh, which should be a dirty word after what they did to Trump, on Russia hacking during the 16, 2016 presidential election, hacking that the president had nothing to do with, Trump had nothing to do with, President Obama had a brief follow-on conversation with FBI Director Jim Comey, a Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates in the Oval Office, Vice President Biden and I were also present. So I, w I want you to think about that. They're having this broader meeting, right? You can, you can just see, uh, you've probably seen movies like this, and this is even worse than a movie because it's real life in terms of the corruption, where you get the meeting, right? And you know something's going on, and the big guy says, uh, you know, you guys stay here. I wanna talk about something with you. And that's when, that's when the corruption happens, right? The secret meeting after the big meeting. And this is the secret meeting with, with Comey and his top people, Vice President Biden, uh, Sally Yates, the corrupt uh, attorney general, um, deputy attorney general in the uh, uh, Justice Department. I think she was, um, no, I guess she was deputy there. She was acting attorney general for uh, Trump for a few weeks until he fired her for her ethical misconduct. 
So President Obama began the conversation by stressing his continued commitment to ensuring that every aspect of this issue is handled by the intelligence and law enforcement communities by the book. So this is the by the book email. He said, I'm going to tell you to do, this is how I interpret it. I'm going to tell you to do all sorts of things that are illegal, unethical, and contrary to your oaths of office. But, you know, Susan, Susan, don't worry. She's going to write an email about this, and she's going to say, I told you to do it by the book. Uh, the president stressed that he's not asking about initiating or instructing anything from a law enforcement perspective. He reiterated that our law enforcement team needs to proceed as it normally would by the book. There it is. That's the second time the phrase shows up. From a national security perspective, however, however, big however there, President Obama said he wants to be sure that as we engage with the incoming team, we are mindful to ascertain if there's any reason we cannot share information fully as it relates to Russia. So what he's saying is, I want to withhold national security information. The incoming president has a constitutional and uh, national that national security requires that he sees because we've got this Russia crap that we're still pushing. And we don't want them to know about it. Director Comey affirmed that he is proceeding by the book. There it is again, third time. As it relates to law enforcement, none of this is by the book. This email is obviously an after the fact CYA memo. From a national security perspective, and the reason they say national security is that means they can throw the rules out the, out the window in terms of spying on American citizens. They think that covers their, uh, covers their you know what when it comes to spying. Oh, it's national security, so we can do whatever we want. Comey said he does, does have some concerns that incoming national security advisor Mike Flynn, General Flynn, is speaking frequently with Russian Ambassador Kislyak. Comey said that it, that could be an issue as it relates to sharing sensitive information. President Obama asked if Comey was saying that the NSC should not pass sensitive information related to Russia to Flynn. Comey replied, potentially. He added that he has no indication thus far that Flynn has passed classified information to Kislyak, but he noted the level of communication is unusual. So this is just smearing, right? They had nothing that, there was no information at the time that Kislyak and Flynn's communications were anything but appropriate. And yet you've got the Comey guy saying, potentially, judging whether or not to give him access to information he has a right to, constitutionally speaking. Talk about interfering with the peaceful transfer of power. This is Exhibit A. The president asked Comey to inform him if anything changes in the next few weeks that should affect how we share classified information with the incoming team. Comey said he would. This is a smoking gun, guys. This is the document that confirms that Barack Obama was personally involved in trying to restrict information uh, and the truth being told to, to Donald Trump about the schemes to smear him as being an agent of Russia. This is what this is about. And it's up to Judicial Watch to try to get the full truth of what went on by suing for records straight out of the Obama White House as to what happened. So what happens is under the presidential record system, we're able to get documents and they're supposed to be able to give them to us, I think, five years after he leaves office. And they're still hiding these records. And it's not like we said, give us every record Obama had as president. We asked for something very specific here. So even Comey confessed in his book uh, and again, targeted and fingered Obama as being, having guilty knowledge that he talked with Obama about confronting Trump with the dossier the next day. The dossier that they all knew was false. Certainly uh, Comey knew. Obama did not appear to have any reaction to any of this, he wrote in, uh, Comey wrote in his book. At least none he would share with us. In a level voice, he asked, What's the plan for that briefing? With just the briefest of sidelong glances at me, Clapper took a breath, then said, We've decided that Director Comey will meet alone with the President-elect to brief him on this material following the completion of the full ICA briefing. So what happened is they were going to brief Trump 
the next day at Trump Tower, I think Clapper was going to be there. I think Brennan was there. And obviously Comey was going to be there. And again, Comey was going to stay around afterwards and, uh, and play spy against Trump. The president did not say a word. Instead, he turned his head to the left and looked directly at me. He raised and lowered both of his eyebrows with emphasis and then looked away. I suppose you can read whatever you want in that wordless expression, but to my mind, his Groucho Marx, I, Mar, Groucho Marx eyebrow raise was both subtle humor and expression of concern. It was almost if he were sa- as if he were saying, good luck with that. I began to feel a lump in my stomach. Well, beside, beside the hilarity of the officiousness of this crook Comey, it highlights the corruption at the highest levels in the Obama White House and the targeting of Trump. So they were going to try to entrap Trump the next day. And what happened was, based on my understanding of the various reports about it, is Trump said, what do you mean about this P-tape and dossier? And what, this is garbage. And he was outraged. And he wanted it investigated. it Because he knew it was false. And what did Comey do? He went downstairs to his... Um, to his car and started typing out Trump's response. So they were running an operation against Trump at that that meeting, orchestrated by Obama. And I don't care what's in this book, I want more information. What did Obama do? He didn't stop Comey from doing it. It He had his tacit approval. As I said in the release, the records we are seeking go to the heart of the Obama administration's efforts to undermine the incoming president and tie up his new administration with a phony scandal. And as I said earlier, the Obama library is part of the same national archive system that is subjecting President Trump to unprecedented harassment while they're hiding and protecting this, these materials about what Obama was told. And this meeting that not only involves Obama, but you know who else? Vice President Biden. Because he had it in for Flynn, and obviously he had it in for Trump, and he was there. I want to know why Durham hasn't talked to all these people. At least publicly that we know about, he hasn't talked to any of them. And it's up to Judicial Watch to kind of swoop in again and do the heavy lifting to get this basic truth about the worst corruption scandal in American history. It's continuing. Because this records dispute down in Mar-a-Lago is just a kind of a, a, you know, part Z of this harassment of Trump that began arguably in 2000, this is my understanding, in 2015. And now it's 2022 and they're showing no signs of stopping. I mean, they were, they're, they're, they've got a grand jury harassing Trump's aides this week, a few days before the election. over the silly records fight. I get ticked about this stuff. So we're gonna, I'll let you know when we get the documents, hopefully we get some documents and um, we're able to blow the whistle on that. As I often observed, President Biden is the most corrupt president since he's been vice president. Meaning, Obama uh, is giving him a run for his money in terms of corruption. Arguably even more corrupt, I would say. Because I'm giving Bi- uh, Biden just a little smidgen of a pass because of his cognitive challenges. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.